All right, Vegas Sports Today, happy to be joined by Sandra Douglas Morgan, the president of the Raiders and the chairwoman uh, alongside Maurice Gallagher for uh, 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 getting everything ready for Super Bowl week here in Las Vegas. Sandra, what do you think has convinced the NFL in, in not even five years into the Raiders' tenure to go from we're going to have a team in the NFL to now we're, we're going to go ahead and host our biggest game in Las Vegas? The, the stadium obviously speaks for itself. It's such an amazing um, stadium. It's been you know, state of the art. Um, we've had already had so many concerts and so many games, so many non-rainer events, um, soccer, uh, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, and the NFL has had time to now see our team, see how we operate, and see how well the ingress and egress and just all the experiences the stadium operates. So I'm really happy that the NFL, you know, has chosen Las Vegas to be able to host the Super Bowl. Obviously, we're incredibly proud as the Las Vegas Raiders uh, to be the host team. And our facilities are, are also, you know, state of the art with respect to our headquarters as well. So it's just a great, honestly, event to see so many people that help lay the foundation to get on um, the Super Bowl here to be here and really celebrate kind of the kickoff and us on um, the Super Bowl leaving six months away. Now, you know, uh, when the NBA had the All Star Game about 15 years yeah. ago, the city was very different, yeah. but they, they did have some problems during that weekend. You feel like 15 years later with the NFL. Those problems will be a lot easier to deal with. There have been time. so many major um, sporting and just major events now in general that Las Vegas has hosted uh, before and actually after after that point in time. So there's not a doubt in my mind with the uh, level of you know community and government services that are here. You have the fire chief here, our sheriff here, our former sheriff is our governor, and uh, to know that we're taking this event incredibly seriously and that people know it's going to be one of the safest Super Bowls as well. And you know the, the community outreach programs that happened during the week. I heard the historic West Side even yeah. got mentioned. And, you know, how important is that going to be for the city? It is. Uh, you know, during my you know my remarks, I made a comment that the executive committee is really focused on making sure that the long-lasting impact of this event doesn't just happen, you know, and end with the game. Um, there's going to be business connect opportunities for local and minority-owned and veteran-owned businesses. There's going to be sustainability initiatives that talk about um, address food insecurity and just making sure that we're reducing our carbon footprint. And those are skills and events that I think are going to continue um, well beyond after the game is gone. And do you feel like getting those kids close to the bright lights of the Super Bowl, just the events, it allows them to dream, you know? And Absolutely. Yeah. There's another aspect that I think that we, we probably should focus a little bit more on is that the partnership and internship that we have with the host committee and UNLV and other higher education um, institutions, allowing students to actually be involved in the game and understanding the planning process and all that goes along with it. That's exposing them to another skill set, another hopefully potential, um, you know, um, occupational kind of pathway that really wouldn't have existed um, without the Super Bowl and the Raiders being here. And you know, the NFL, they've been, um, you know, really been serious about their diversity and inclusion moving forward. Do you feel like? You know, with yourself, people like yourself working on it, that they're walking the walk. It's not just talk. Yeah. Well, you know, that really is a testament to Mark Davis, honestly, and the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders have been um, historically have always really embraced and encouraged and hired and retained people based on their skill set, not just not just based on what they look like. Um, so DE and I is really kind of. Um, woven into the fabric of being a Raiders. We've got the first female CEO, first African-American head coach in Art Shell, uh, first Hispanic Super Bowl winning coach in Tom Flores. And I'm just really uh, proud to be a part of such a rich legacy of the Raiders that's supporting that. And I'm proud that the NFL is um, also you know, looking into expanding and have done a lot over the last few years to really um, expanding not only their fan base and knowing that there's tons of different people and different backgrounds and different walks of life that enjoy the NFL. I know you're not the GM of the Raiders, but are you hoping that Josh Jacobs situation you know, gets resolved and we get to see him play in silver I and think black? it's safe to say collectively that anyone in Raider Nation uh, would love to see uh, Josh Jacobs be uh, in the team. And lastly, uh, any thoughts on the, the Bad Bunny rumors that he might be the, the Super Bowl halftime? No, show? no comment on that. You'll have to leave that to the NFL. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, thank you.